I have to talk about this, which is Inspector Morse. I have been so happy, so happy of late because, oh, for many reasons actually, but one of the reasons is that I was so fortunate to have been able to receive a number of comments from people who have been watching my past videos where I had the set maybe on the shelf here somewhere and I just had it because I've been revisiting a number of the Morse episodes. Inspector Morse, one of my absolute favorite TV mystery detective series ever. Ever. I'm a big fan of mystery detective series, a big Agatha Christie fan. I've mentioned a little bit about those mystery adaptations, the novel adaptations. Spectre Morse is one of the best, in my opinion. I, uh, Of course, these were uh, based off of the novels by Colin Dexter and the creation of Inspector Morse by Colin Dexter and uh, Sergeant Lewis and the whole cast of characters. And then it turned into its own thing with uh, stories that weren't necessarily novels to begin with. And then there were other adaptations of later novels to round out the long run of this epic, epic uh, TV series, Inspector Morse. There is something of a real quirky, almost creepy quality to the way some of the, the, uh, the shots are edited together, the way that montage is used to introduce uh, very obliquely and very mysteriously aspects of the series that will play themselves out later on uh, in the particular episodes. So, uh, and the character of Morse is a fascinating one. He's uh, grumpy, he's somewhat... Um, sometimes a little bit avuncular, but also very brilliant. Uh, sometimes he gets it right, sometimes he doesn't get it right. And it's his, uh, it's his uh, vulnerability and his uh, inability to connect all the time uh, that really makes him a very uh, intriguing central character. And we are not only concerned with Inspector Morse as a detective, but we are also concerned and we are very, essentially rooting for him as a human being because of his interactions and in particular his interactions with uh, the various women that he meets along the way and that we meet along the way. And of course his relationship with Lewis is one of the key components of this uh, marvelous series. And the, uh, the, the chemistry between the two of them, uh, Morris and Lewis, is I think one of the really essential heartbeats of the the success of this of course it is of course it is right uh lewis of course went on to have his own series and uh, and then we also have endeavor and, and all that but for me it always came down to inspector morse and so i'm a huge huge fan of morse uh the the, the uh some of the earlier uh episodes um were really great uh, let's see, um, there was, and also, uh, well, let's see, what are some of the episodes that I really enjoy? There's so many, of course, and I've mentioned a num number of them in some comments, but like Driven to Distraction is really good. Um, I'm, uh, I like the later ones too, like Daughters of Cain, that's really, really good. I think that's one of the strongest ones of the later batch of, of, of episodes. And, uh, Death is Now My Neighbor is also another interesting one. Um... Oh, some of the real classic ones are, for example, oh my goodness, uh, let's see, uh, Masonic Mysteries. Oh, that's one of my all-time favorites. My all-time favorites. Uh, what a clever mystery that is. And the use of, of the magic flute and Mozart, the magic flute, and how that's uh, intertwined into the narrative. Brilliant absolutely brilliant um there's also dead on time too i i think that's one of the most uh, just emotionally moving morse episodes of the entire series i think that's just uh that packs an emotional wallop my goodness my goodness for those who've seen it you know what i'm talking about so many places that it goes and it, it starts off really quite 
quite stunningly and just keeps on going and going and going. It's, it's, it's like an emotional roller coaster in many ways. Um, let's see. Uh, there's another. What are some other ones? Um, uh, I can probably mention, too, that my absolute favorite Morse episode, my all-time favorite Morse episode, is one which is called Second Time Around. Second Time Around. And this is a, it's, it's one of those, I think dramatically, one of those perfectly constructed uh, episodes of television. What a, it's a perfect construction. So dramatically satisfying, epic in terms of its emotional scope. It is perfect with regard to the depiction of Morse and Lewis, and in particular, the focus on Morse and the past, retrospect, and m murder, and a very tragic one at that too, and how this tragedy ha takes its toll on everyone concerned uh, to the point of no return in many respects. And even years and years after the, 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 the events have occurred. And so this is a, a, this is one of my absolute favorites of any TV drama, period, let alone the Morse series. And so um, I think it's here. Yes, it should be in this set. This is one of these three uh, disc sets. It comes in this box. And so uh, and it, it has uh, three cases like this. So it comes in, here, here it is, it, it comes in the second the second uh, uh, one here, uh, so second time around. So there are other ones here. M Masonic Mysteries is on here, too. Um, oh, Absolute convi Conviction, too. That's a, that's a good one. But second time around is, I think, one of the m one of the most uh, s sublime examples of uh, British drama on TV, in my opinion. So perfect, and the the use of the music. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, Puccini. And uh, for uh, Sor Angelica, and this is uh, Senza Mama, a very famous, uh, very famous uh, 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 piece of opera music, and the use of Senza Mama uh, in this work is so perfect. It is so perfect. You know, I talked in past video maybe about the favorite uses of music in cinema and I, I think I got a lot of great responses but I think if I were to answer that question I think one of the examples I would give is probably Senza Mama in the use uh, its use of Senza Mama in the episode of Morse called Second Time Around. This is my favorite Morse episode. Um, there are so many, of course, too. Uh, uh, Service of All the Dead, too. Gosh, well, I, I forgot to mention that one. That's an early one, of course. And my goodness, that scared me so much. When I was a kid living in the United Kingdom, uh, there was a period of my, my childhood where I was living in the United Kingdom. And so I would be able to watch Morse episodes on TV. And one of the earliest ones that I was able to watch was Service of All the Dead. Now... If you've seen that one, you know that that is a creepy one. That is really, really creepy. There is a, a real dark, very disturbing, almost sleazy aspect to it that is also enmeshed in this, uh, in this uh, uh, religious iconography that is portrayed very chillingly. And then we have a conundrum of a mystery that becomes more than meets the eye in terms of a particular church and uh, death that, uh, and murders that occur uh, with respect to a particular uh, church. And uh, that leads to many, many uh, TV uh, Morse-like hijinks along the way. Uh, so, yes, the uh, service of all the dead. My, oh, that's really a creepy one. Uh, and where's the, let's see, the the other one I wanted to mention. Oh, Deadly Slumber. Deadly Slumber, so that's on the third disc here. Deadly Slumber is one that I, I, I thought was another, just a fantastically emotionally dynamic one. Uh, and it, there's, uh, there's a kind of 
twist on twist on twist in that, which I thought was really effectively applied. And the story, the underlying story, is, is really quite gut-wrenching. Uh, oftentimes the stories involve families, they involve parents and children, they involve really intimate relationships. And when they go into this route and they handle them with such uh, uh, care and such, uh, such respect, and uh, when they do that, they really have the ability also of going so far in the exploration. And sometimes they go in really dark places. So, uh, but they always do it with a, a real care and respect. And so uh, Deadly Slumber is one of them. Really great stuff. Oh, my goodness. So many great ones, too. And I mentioned it already, but The Daughters of Cain. Uh, if second time around is my favorite Morse episode, I think The Daughters of Cain is probably my second favorite Morse episode. That is also so perfectly constructed, The Daughters of Cain. What a perfectly constructed uh, uh, work that is. Oh, my goodness. And uh, uh, the everything, right down to the, the, the allusions to Macbeth and Verdi and uh, Morse's hair. It's too long. And the the uh, the way that the mystery is constructed, and the sort of idea of a of a, is there a conspiracy? Is there not a conspiracy? And and the uh, the notion of of uh, of uh, a a crime that probably involves uh, a uh, maybe an antagonist or antagonists. We don't quite know. That could be. Uh, uh, that could be quite uh, uh, something that Morse is uh, might not necessarily be able to take care of, if you know what I mean. And so uh, there's that and so much more to the Daughters of Cain. That is another, I think, perfectly constructed one. So as I say, I think Second Time Around is my number one favorite. But if I had to choose a number two favorite, it would, it would be the Daughters of Cain. That is such a, a great great piece of television right there oh my goodness i i love that so much i think i'm gonna watch that i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna watch i've got to watch second time around and i've got to watch the daughters of cain again um and, I'll, and the daughters of cain of course is based on a, uh based on a a, a a novel and so i've read all the colin dexter novels the morse novels and so i'm i'm a fan of the morse novels very much so uh but there's something really quite distinct about the the uh, the TV series, which I, I really find fascinating. I, this is an interesting thing about the the source uh, novels and the adaptations that followed, and the the wonderful uh, interactions that occur between the two. There are similarities. There are also some interesting parallels, and also some divergences as well. Uh, but uh, uh, so that makes for very interesting, um, very interesting uh, comparative analysis. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, if you're looking for an interesting comparative analysis, uh, for instance. Uh, take a look at, for example, the the Wolvercoat tongue. Uh, so, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, yet, yeah, so there's the Wolvercoat tongue. Uh, but um, oh yes, yes, Morse. Ah, oh, this is a this is a great one. So I'm going to go and watch uh, second time around. And if I have time, I'm going to watch the Daughters of Cain right now.